Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Tanat here. Well, this is the next in the build log for the STH-10 Monster build. And right now what I'm looking at doing is figuring out the best uh, SLI uh, fittings to use across the you know, CSQ blocks there on the graphics cards. So let me zoom in a little bit here. So what I'm trying to figure out right now is the best tubing set up for the, uh, the GPU blocks. Now, what I have right here, these are the uh, shiny silver enhanced fittings that have the, uh, the couplings, you know, right here. They're integrated to the right angle. So, um, and they have, the, they're the new style, the enhanced ones, so they have the cover for them. So, basically, you know, you put your rigid tubing and a washer on it and then you slide it in and then you tighten down this collar over it kind of like a very much like a compression fitting for um, the flexible tubing now the one thing I was thinking of doing is possibly doing that because that actually flows with these that I've used down here on the RAM blocks and so that's one way to go um, another option I was thinking of using these Q blocks this happens to be an L block and one of those standard or the, the low profile uh, original uh, crystal link fittings. So that's another way potentially to go. But um, I think that's too big. You know, I mean, it is shiny silver and I have some brand new ones. This one's a little, needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But I wanted to do probably a parallel uh, bridge. So that means I would get, you know, uh, tubing coming up into this one here and then it would feed this one so I was thinking about going with that but because of the way these blocks are positioned it's very tight so you can see there's not a lot of room between that and the next block that I would use so this is probably not going to work to do that even if it's a serial bridge it's not going to work this looks like it works better but the more I look at it I just not uh, you know I mean these CSQ blocks are nice and I polish them but I've been kind of like pigeonholing myself into a corner because I went with the CSQ blocks because they're the only full cover blocks that um, were available when I, I had just bought my 980s and I wanted to start the build. Um, so, uh, you know, I think the CSQ blocks could look good, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not really liking it right now. Uh, and I don't really like having to do these. So of course, many of you must be screaming to the camera, hey, why don't you use the CXQ block? Well, this is the bridge system that's designed for these blocks, these cards here, just like this. And if I polish the top, it'll match everything else. And that'll look all right, but I don't know, it's just something that doesn't seem right. You have all this nice clear, clear stuff and uh, these, the, you know, the, the bridges, and then we'll be feeding this guy. Yeah, that'll be clear, but I'm just not, I'm just not loving the solution totally. And I have to live with this for a long time, and I don't want to just settle. So at the time I bought these full cover blocks, they were the only full cover blocks um, that were out there uh, when I bought the GTX 980s. But now that it's been a little while, there are some other options out there. So uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we have the CXQ blocks removed from the 980 GT axis. And, um, you know, after I went through all of that fun in getting those blocks and getting them polished and clear and putting them in the system, but still not being quite satisfied. They're nice and they look good, but it's not quite what I wanted. So. Now that there's been a little time out there, and of course the um, CSQs now are not the only full cover blocks on the market, because Bits Power has come out with a full cover block for the GTX 980. And let's take a look at it and see. Well, first it it comes with a back plate. So 
for this block you don't pay for a separate back plate although you really are paying for it it's in the cost of the kit but this is the back plate for it and the block is this really sharp looking block right here and let me take it out of the package and here we have it this is the bits power VG hyphen NGTX 980 this is acrylic top with the stainless steer panel of course with all the clear blocks so here's a full cover block and it, the beauty of it it has you know exactly what my theme has it's um, aside from the red uh, everything else in there is black and uh, either nickel or stainless so this is a sharp looking block and this is the kind of thing that I had pictured in my mind when I uh, first got the uh, 980s and but unfortunately again nobody had anything like this when I first got the 980s but now we do so I'm gonna go ahead and install this block on the GTX 980 well, let me get out the uh, pads and accessories and I uh, have the instructions out already so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get down to it and um, I'll show you how this block gets installed on the GTX 980. Now the main thing that you got to do for besides taking apart the the GTX 980 stock fans which you saw me do uh, with the um, CSQ blocks from UK um, so I don't have to do that now but the next thing I got to do of course is put the pads on this and on this uh, board with the integrated with the back plate they have I will put um, thermal pads on here on the front and also on the back just like I really I had to do with the uh, EK version um, uh, with the uh, back plate that that I bought for that as well so but one of the things that I need to do first since I already had pads on this and I had put some thermal uh, paste on the chips is I don't know if you can see it but all the memory chips have still some residue and these chips that I put pads on have some residue so I'm gonna go ahead and clean them off with the uh, this uh, Arctic um, clean thermal material remover and also the uh, purifier so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I'm gonna clean up everything on here and then uh, then I'll come back and uh, show you uh, what you're supposed to do to prep and put pads on this guy so now that I have the chips all cleaned off with the uh, excess thermal paste that was left on them from my first install they all look good all cleaned up now I'm ready to apply pads now bits power provides only two pads one's a th really thick one I think this is like a it's a one millimeter thick uh, I'm sorry 2.5 millimeter thick thermal pad and this is for the back so this is between the back of the PCB of the graphics card and the um, back plate so this one will set aside and then we got a bunch of these which are all one millimeter thick these are the ones that go on the uh, on the chips uh, the memory and a bunch of the uh, VRMs and everything else and just like any other um, pad there's uh, both a backing and a front so you have to remove both in order to be able to apply them to the uh, to the chips so what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to um, cut them up and they do a fantastic job and EK does, EK does a good job too but they clearly show you they have a diagram on here show you every single chip that needs to get a an area that needs to get a thermal pad so I'm just going to follow uh, this layout and cut the pads accordingly to size and they give you plenty of pads and they even give you some extra and then for the back plate here you have um, a bunch then one thing I have to point out though is there's a, a lot more chips that this uh, block uh, cools or at least they have you putting pads and in quite a few more places than the EK block does and I guess maybe it has to do with the design or whatever but there's just uh, a lot more uh, little guys that are covered here um, than there is on the when you use the EK plates and not that it's a you know 
any better, but I guess it's uh, maybe a little bit more thorough. Anything that they milled out um, with uh, that will touch these guys, they've considered that. Uh, because pretty much everything from this section over, there's about seven or eight pads here, those are not uh, covered on the with the EK block. But uh, but again, this is just Fitz Powers design and how they uh, how they you know they did this block. So I'm going to go ahead now and um, cut pads, and then I'll show you once all the pads are placed, so that we can mount the block. Okay, I have all the pads cut and applied, and I did put a dab of thermal paste on each on each of the uh, chips, just a little bit on everything, so that the thermal pad would stay with it, and also helps with thermal conduction as well through the pad. So, um, so I don't know if you can see pads galore, and then uh, thermal paste. I actually put it on the chip on. Uh, I'm, because you need to cover the whole space of it and instead of just applying it in a massive star that oozes out everywhere, I went ahead and used the, uh, the spreader and I spread it on, on the uh, chip. So now we're ready to install this nice block and it's been sitting in the box. I have not touched this side. So what I'm going to do right now is align it with the holes and I can see this particular these standoffs right here, right at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and set it down right on top of this. And I recommend you double check the diagram just to make sure you have all the pads where you need them. And I did, and I had them right. But I just recommend that if you're, uh, especially if you're new to doing this. Now what I'm doing is I'm just lining up a couple of places. And now that they're aligned, what I'm going to do is pick it up and put it upside down on this box so that I can now get the back plate because basically this is pretty straightforward. i got to cut more pads and apply them to the back of the, uh, the card here. And then once I apply them, then there's about 10 screws to secure it to the plate. Uh, I'm sorry, to secure the back plate to the block but it holds everything together. Now the EK installation has you, depending on whether you're reusing the original back plate or a new one, you have to take certain screws out and use certain screws here and then remove a few other. This, I've got to tell you, is really straightforward. You know, So you get everything in the kit that you need and um, of course you, you, you would not be able to reuse the back plate that came with your uh, 980 so this kit includes everything you need to do that. And so, um, but anyway, that's uh, what you need to do. It actually, it's three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12. It's about 14 screws that you have to put in. But first, I need to cut the thicker pads and apply them per the illustration that they have here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And then I will bring you back and we'll secure the back plate. Okay, now that we have the pads installed along the back, we're ready to install the back plate and secure everything together. So again, so far all I did was apply pads to the front and then flip, place the block on top then flipped it over and then cut the uh, pads on the back uh, before I mount the back plate. So now that I have that done, I am now going to um, lay the back plate over. And align it up with the holes. And then now what I'm going to do is using the screws they provided, I'm going to go ahead and install them. But I'm going to first start with the mounting the uh, four that is around the GPU. Going to kind of do it in a star pattern. I'm not going to torque them down just yet. Okay, now that I have them, those four down about the same, I'm going to go ahead and 
torque these down a little bit in a star pattern. All right, now I'm going to place the other ones in the, in the holes and then I'll start screwing them down. Now there are standoffs, so these things do bottom out, so you can't over tighten them. They're not, it's not like you're screwing into the acrylic, you're screwing into standoffs. So once you get them in there nice and tight, I think we should be good to go. So there we have it. The Bits Power VG NGTX 980 acrylic top with stainless panel. Now that's a nice looking block. That's a really nice looking block. Alrighty, so that's uh, that's what it looks like. They also provide you with uh, extra pads, and they also give you two Bits Power stop fittings so they got a couple of uh, stop fittings that you can use they give you a bunch of extra uh, o-rings or gaskets for the block in case you do have to disassemble it you can uh, and they you know and over time you can wear it down of course they give you the tools so that's it that's how you install that block now uh, take care of the other ones and uh, then we'll install it into the motherboard and see how it looks Alright, now that we have the blocks installed, before I put them onto the motherboard tray, I do need to uh, install LEDs. Now the Bits Power have uh, three points for putting LEDs as opposed to the uh, EKs, they only had two. And also these are five millimeter uh, holes. So I had to get some five millimeter dark side connect LEDs. So I've got Got those here. I'll need to arrange to install and bend them and have the cables come out the way I want to. And uh, and so basically, I've got to put three on each block. And then I'm going to add a, a Y splitter to them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, they just connect up straight forward. These are also uh, dark side splitters that are designed for the, uh, the connectors on the dark side cables that are provided. So the block that's farthest away and it's going to come out will get the long set of cables. And then I have some with a shorter version, a 4 inch version. I think these are like 10 inch version. So. Um, let me go ahead and uh, start getting the blocks put in to the motherboard. Now before I put the Bits Power blocks in the 980s on here, uh, I think one of the lessons that I think I learned here is keeping, unless you're going to do something totally different with each block set, I think it's best that you go with the same style of block. So. The mistake I made before uh, was probably trying to mix these clean blocks with the CSQs. So I really don't like the CSQs. The only reason, like I said, I went with them is because they were the only full cover blocks that were available at the time. And I polished them up thinking that that would do the job, but just wasn't quite right. So before I put Bits Power 980 blocks with the cards in there, um, I have these nice clear CSQs, but what I decided to do is let's stay Bits Power all the way. So. I have some bits power clear blocks here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this and replace the EK blocks with the bits power ones. 
and I'll save these for another build where I go all clear EK. So I think that's going to happen. So I've got the Uniblock from Bits Power. I've got Bits Power um, RAM blocks, and then I got Bits Power G GPU blocks. So it should all look pretty damn good. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and replace them, and I'll give you a shot of that. So here we have the before with the EK RAM blocks and some fittings on there. All right, there we have it. We have the Bits Power RAM blocks installed with the uh, Crystal Link and some tubing coming across them. Next up, time to get GPUs installed. I'm going to get some LEDs in them and then we'll start racking them into the motherboard tray. All right, so where we're at right now is what I want to do is finish the tubing layout so I know where I need to go below in the case to the radiators and uh, and also if I need to go above the uh, main compartment and run any tubing up above by the power supply. So uh, originally I mean I have drafted out um, a plan uh, for my tubing and, and I ordered a bunch of fittings based on that but whenever you actually get into doing the tubing runs when you wind up fine-tuning and um, deciding on some things that maybe you hadn't considered uh, or some cooler things that uh, uh, that came up and some difficulties too so um, one of the first things I did now that I have the pumps mounted I am deciding on where I need to bring the tubing down into the base of the STH 10 and I want to make it clean so I wasn't just going to leave the uh, the panel that uh, I had in my last build when I had regular tubing I had this panel wide open and tubing running in and out of there but I decided not to do that and as you can see I've got a couple of um, fill ports there that are actually G quarter ports from bits power that allow me to tap into it so um, I've already you know I've already planned and figured out that I'm going to take um, each of the runs is going to a different radiator so I've got one that's going to come out and go down and go to this rad down here and then the other one's going to go out and go to the other side and go to the rad on the back side um, so that's the plan to go down here now these are actually outputs these are coming from the radiator so let me show you what I've uh, hooked up and decided to do there so you can get a better idea so right now what I'm talking about is got two separate lines going in and I need to figure out where I'm gonna mount the tubes to go down into the bottom portion of the case um, I already decided it was a straight line to come out of the radiators so let me show you what I did there So coming out of the rads, so I'm going to go down and in to the bottom of the uh, radiators for the inlets. And the reason why you go at the bottom is to help with the uh, bleeding the system, bleeding the loop. So if you start at the bottom, then it forces the air out and up. So I'm going to come down and go in here on this rad. And then coming out, I have a temperature sensor, so I know what the coolant uh, temperature is coming out of the uh, radiator. And then I have a, uh, I think that's a 15 millimeter um, extension fitting with a uh, right angle uh, right angle uh, rotary bits power fitting and then I have an aqualink tube so right here I have an aqualink that uh, allows me to connect directly to the bottom of the um, of the fill port the fill port has you can see comes down and then actually will screw right into there so I did the exact same thing on this side here so this will be one one radiator for the loop on this side. Again, having a temperature sensor giving me the temp of the coolant coming out of that and then going up and out. So once I come out up here, that'll take me then down to the um, either the CPU and chipset loop uh, or the graphics loop. Now, but one of the things I have to deal with here is I have to bring tubing down and then connect to the Aquero and I plan to have a water block on the Aquero so I need and I'm mounting the Aquero down here where I can run all my fans I have my fan power I have my temperature sensors so this is the logical place down here to put the Aquero and so I just got to figure out now where to drop down the fittings uh, the uh, pass-throughs 
so that I can connect to it and then from there I'll go into into the uh, into the rad and the only reason I have uh, an extension on here so when I, anything I have to screw in it doesn't in effect interfere with the fan uh, it doesn't get in the way so that's why I have it brought out here this one I don't need it because the fans are on the other side so that's why that's set up like that but uh, yeah I need to do that and the other thing I need to do is I also need to figure out where I'm going to put these uh, flow sensors these are uh, aqua computer uh, flow sensors for the Aquero and so they have uh, just the port in and out doesn't matter um, which side there's no particular direction on this uh, I just need to figure out where am I going to put those I was thinking about putting them down here to hide them out of the way but that's just a lot of cramped space to try to get this in and uh, I really don't want to do a run down there and then coming back so it's going to be up here or uh, that's why I said I might need to uh, put it in the very top so I might come out and put it in the top so uh, I gotta figure that one out but for right now in order to figure out where to mount the um, the fittings to come down I'm gonna assemble the Aquero so I have here the water block I have the LT controller and uh, then I have also the power adjusts as well I've got a couple of power adjusts that I will be mounting so that's what's going to happen down here in this portion of the case right now and I'll show you what I come up with okay so I was able to uh, assemble the power adjusts onto the uh, the bracket and also have the Aquero on the the brackets for the flex bay short brackets so really nothing fancy uh, just mounting some screws some standoffs and then you have the uh, circuit card mounted now one of the things I was I mentioned is I was gonna I'm gonna was gonna water cool this but number one the water cooling block the threads on the block that I have are hosed up I mean, it's brand new but the threads are just terrible and the other thing that I realized as I was working down here to put fittings in and arrange to get the, the water cooling down here if I water cool this this block that was on here and mounted here it's going to be very difficult for me to do any maintenance or even drain it without having to pull this guy out so I didn't think that through originally so um, but I only have eight fans that are going on the Aquero even if I had a couple more this uh, this uh, fan heat sink will handle that I mean the, the controllers on there will handle up to almost 20 fans on one on one of these channels um, but the issue is once you start um, going at lower speeds then it heats up the uh, the VRMs there so but this heat sink should do it just for I'm gonna have four fans on one channel and four fans on another and if I decide to add some more it's not gonna tax the, the this uh, Aquero and one of the things to note is I always buy the LT this is the Aquero just the controller does not have the display because I have this system on the ground and I don't uh, control my fans from the displays on there I rather use the software interface that you get with the Aquero to do that and some of the newer fan controllers actually have software interfaces which I like much better I prefer to do that so and the other thing to note about the uh, this Aquero LT controller it's like it's about it's only about $75 if you can still get the LT controller because they make the Aquero 6 now but they don't make one that's just this controller this was only 75 bucks and the XT itself was like at least $100 more I forget what it is but adding that LCD display it makes it uh, makes it a lot more expensive so and any once you have the Aquero set up as I'll show you once this is all done you just let it run once you configure it you leave it unattended I mean you main you know you take a look and you make sure that everything looks to be running right but set up fan curves and all that but anyway so I have the power adjust each one of these is going to run a pump so for one for each of the loops and uh, those are the uh, power adjusts are mounted down here and actually uh, I'll give you a quick shot if you want to see you can mount three power adjusts on that panel. I only have two because I only have two pumps. And I'll have um, also all the appropriate uh, thermal sensors and stuff connected to it. So what I'm waiting for now is some cues because I also need to mount my drainage system down here. And uh, I don't have those yet. So I can't do that, but uh, I still think I might... Uh, I'm still thinking about where I'm going to put the, uh, the ports for bringing the cooling down here. And, uh, but I think I might wait till I get those pieces in before I drill holes because I'd like to line them up just like I did here. So I'd like to have like right angles, have the cue come out, have the drainage pieces and then it go directly up to somewhere up in here. So, so 
And then this will be covered up with one of these plates right here. So when this gets mounted, it will look like this. There you go. And then the other panels will cover that. So that's what the bottom of the uh, uh, STH-10 is going to look like. And then I'll have a, a view into the portion down here so that I can access the cabling and stuff to connect to it. So, All right. Now let's look at some other portions of the loop. All right. So I went ahead and uh, made some decisions and figured out where I was going to place the pass-throughs to the bottom chamber of the STH-10. Now these two here are going to each of the uh, ra radiators, so those are going to be the in coming out of the uh, out of the pumps right here down into these guys. And then at the bottom you can see that I used a uh, down here to get into each rad I used a 180T and the other thing I now just have to figure out is to mount the, uh, the drain system. So the 180 has one piece, one input, input here, and then the other one is at the bottom. Uh, they are on rotaries here. I had to put a little bit of an extender. I used a right angle uh, fitting. It's the same on this one. And then I use one with a, a rotary in a 90 degree. And then that's a 50 millimeter extension with a, uh, it's a dual G quarter fitting right there. There's also a mini one too, but this is the perfect length and it screws right into the the fill port uh, piece. So that's what I have on both sides. And since these are on rotaries, when I take that off, these things can actually swing down. I've also test fitted the Aquero in here and the power adjust so they fit right down here out of the way and there's no impact here. And I didn't have to use, I was thinking about using some acrylic tubing, but uh, that would have been more of a hassle. So I like uh, this uh, design. I don't have everything tightened down, but I will be doing that because uh, about ready to tighten that up and finish the uh, rest of the uh, loops now that I th have the to and from the bottom compartment figured out. So uh, I am going to go ahead and uh, mount these. I'll show you that shortly. And then the next thing I do have to do is I have these flows here, the uh, flow meters from the Aquero uh, that I need to connect. And I got to figure out where they are, and since they have a power connection, I want to, uh, I plan to mount them this way and pass them down through also. And since the Aquero is right down here, this is going to be, this is around this area here is going to be the, the best place to put them. Um, I was thinking about putting them under here, but I do have an adjustment on the bottom of these in case I need to get to them that I want to, uh, I don't want to mess with. So uh, I got to figure that out. So let me go ahead and finish up the drain loop. And then we'll work on the uh, path of the tubing, the acrylic tubing. All right, so there we have the drainage system for both loops. You have basically, um, this is a triple rotary, one, two, three, yeah, triple th rotary right angle fitting, and then a mini G quarter adapter because these um, valves don't have any uh, male threads are just female on both sides. So that is uh, there. I will put a uh, stop fitting at the end, but that's one on one side and the exact same thing on the other. And because they're on rotaries, I can spin them and turn them out of the way and all that. So um, they fit and there's plenty of room for the Aquero. Um, actually, here's the uh, power adjusts. And these guys would be mounted down here. power adjust mounted and you can see there's plenty of room back there and I have room to connect up the pump and the cables and everything so uh, it's working out good so that's the drains now installed I do have to go through and take it apart and tighten everything down again just to make sure that it fit is uh, just a fit check that I did right now um, but before I do that like I said I still need to modify this panel up here to bring the 
signal cable from the Aquero flow meters down and I'm probably gonna have to drill a hole through here but I need to find out where I'm gonna place them so I know where to drill the holes so I'm gonna work on that next alright so what I'm looking for right now is where to place the flow meter now these are the outs of the loops one loop there and another loop here and so what I'm thinking about is coming up with the right angle fitting and going into this and then uh, coming out with the tubing to run it the rest of the way I did think about maybe putting it up top, putting the flow meters and having tubing run all the way up and pass through the top chamber. But then I really, then I have to worry about the cable, running the meter cable all the way down. So I think what I'm going to do to keep it simple is just find a way to make it look cool. Actually the black backing of this looks good, is to mount them around here. So maybe have them offset, one coming out um, and uh, and going into that and then going to the particular loop and another one here or maybe one in front of this pump and one in front of that pump so uh, but again I need to be separated so that's the one thing I'm gonna work out now well guys actually I think I'm gonna end this uh, build log right here because really what I'm gonna get into next is uh, all of the acrylic tubing so uh, we're gonna finish it up right now in build log 5 and uh, I'm curious, how many of you guys noticed there was a change that I didn't show you? Well, it's right here in this pic. You can see the monoblock is no longer the black one. I went with the clear one. So uh, that was something I just, it was bugging me. Black one looked okay, but I think this looks so much better. So anyway, I hope you guys like that change and agree. And if you do like this video, please like and favorite. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe. That's it from Ron's a Nut. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with the next in the series.